Hey folks, so I wanted to talk about uh, my experience using uh, teleconverters on the Lumix S5 II. Uh, now, recently uh, I bought the Sigma 100-400D GGN. I think that's the lens, quite a long-winded name. Lens uh, for doing some wildlife photography, and it's mainly for photography. And my experience with the lens in that respect was that the autofocus does seem to be slowed down uh, somewhat. You're obviously going to lose um, one, point uh, one stop of light because uh, it's a 1.4 teleconverter. It's the, uh, I've got it here, it's the, uh, the TC1411 uh, uh, Sigma teleconverter that I've been using. Um, and although it does slow the autofocus down, and I think in single autofocus it's using contrast, I think it's still using phase detect in continuous autofocus it's just quite slow to acquire because you're at f7.1 to f9 versus f5 to f6.3 which is the lens's uh, native widest aperture depending on whether you're at 100 millimeters or 400 millimeters. Now i would um, been talking on a few of the, uh, the Lumix forums um, and I think there was a few a bit of interest in how the lens performs with video on the S5 II. So it's been quite a dreary rainy day today but I uh, waited all morning until some birds landed on the hedges and what I'm going to do is show, um, first of all you'll see it because it's the more zoomed in um, of the shots uh, at 400 millimeters with the teleconverter which is 560 millimeters. We're on constant autofocus. I'll put the exact autofocus settings um, down below in the description of what I've got set in the camera. Uh, and on looking at them, it seems to be generally fairly accurate. I'm not sure I can see any focus wobbling, but that's why I'm putting the, um, the video up so you can also review it. I'm also deliberately varying the, uh, the focus, so I'm focusing on the, um, the nearby bush and then I'm deliberately focusing away just to see how quickly the lens moves between the subject and something in the background, just to simulate how quickly it reacquires. Now I've got animal detect on, uh, which means that it will look for the things like the birds or any wildlife that lands in the, uh, the shot. Um, and this is the result you actually get with the teleconverter. So I'll bring it up on the screen now. And like I just said, it's a little bit slower, but it seems to be reasonably confident. It can, like a lot of telephoto lens, still lose the autofocus when it's uh, moving across the full range. Um, I have used the focus limiter to help it in both cases, uh, but it seems to be reasonably okay at keeping. It doesn't seem to be pulsing that I can see, um, but again, I might have missed something, so this is why I'm putting the video up. So the next test I did was, let's compare it to, um, without the teleconverter, at 400 millimeters. Now, using the lens at 400 millimeters, uh, for stills photography, it's pretty good autofocus. Um, I've been pretty surprised by how good it was actually um, at capturing birds in flight and also just locking uh, on birds that are reasonably close to you as the typical blur bird on a stick uh, shots. Uh, and again in video, it just seems quicker to acquire the subject. Um, now, I certainly wouldn't go for action shots and birds in flight with the teleconverter it does slow the autofocus down to the point where it struggles. Um, but I think for these fairly static shots where you're moving between in and out between a background and then telling it to refocus on the foreground, it seems to be fairly accurate at constant autofocus. It's single autofocus where you'll see that classic hunting that it does. So more, the moral of this video is just to illustrate what you can do uh, with the actual teleconverter itself. Um, I haven't got the 150 to 600 lens. I'd like to see what it is as a comparison. I would imagine it would be faster. Um, you probably notice as well that you actually get more compression at 560 despite the F9 versus 
uh, f6.3. Um, they sound like they're a world apart, but they're not. They're only a stop um, apart. And I think the extra compression more than makes up for that. So you're actually going to get um, effectively a shallower depth of field with the teleconverter, and it would appear from, from what the tests I've done. Uh, so if I was to just sum up, I would say it's worth getting the teleconverter, but with a caveat that you won't be able to do all of that you expected. And what I have found is when it loses autofocus, it often, well not often, it sometimes doesn't come back uh, to pick up what you want to focus on, which is not great. Whereas when you're on the, um, without the teleconverter, it seems to be more confident at coming back to pick up um, the subject you're trying to focus on. Having said that, the problem with this lens is, and again, this is not, not showing up in a test, in real life, you're often focusing on things close to you within, say, a few metres, and all things far away, so you're having to flick between focus limit on and off, uh, whether you want to put the autofocus switch to focus within six metres of you, or in the mid-range, or beyond six metres to infinity, and if you get that switch wrong, the camera's not going to autofocus, regardless of whether you have a teleconverter on or you don't have a teleconverter on. So, all in all, you're going to see a degradation of um, autofocus performance. But on testing, I think it still is using phase detect. It's just slow, um, incredibly slow, um, compared to some cameras like my... Fuji uh, film XT5 with a 100 to 400, which is coming to 150 to 600, is rattling off 15 frames a second uh, with constant autofocus. Um, and again, on burst mode, you will find that on the one without the teleconverter, the camera will be able to hit about seven frames a second, but with the teleconverter, it's probably dropping to three to four. Um, from what I can, when I've used it on that, for, for stills. But for video, it's it seems pretty good. Um, once it's locked onto the target, it doesn't seem to lose it. Um, it seems to maintain the focus. I think where it gets confused, and I'll bring up a sample here, is if the background's quite busy, which you tend to wouldn't want to do with certain, with wildlife photography. But as a test. Busy background with the twigs in, it was wobbling a bit, um, which it would do anyway, I think, with the 100 to 400, just not as much. Um, so, this lens, the 100 to 400, with the teleconverter, is probably going to cost you used about £800. And if you were to get the 150 to 600 used, it would probably cost you about 11 to 1200 pounds. So it's a significant saving on, on the price. I think the prices new are still about two to 300 pound different um, between them. So there is a saving. Um, I do like the shallower depth of field, which was surprising. I didn't think the compression and the aperture change would compensate for that, but it has. Um, so you're compressing it more because it's a longer focal length. Um, and of course the weight, um, this weighs nothing, about 100, 150 grams if that, and the lens that I've got, the one at 400, I believe is about 900 or 900 grams to a kilogram, say around about a kilogram, so you're looking at about, probably about 1.2 kilograms maximum. And when I looked up the specs on the 150 to 600 it was about nearly two just a shade under two kilograms so it's a lot of extra weight to lug around but again I would love to try that lens out but based on what I've read about the 150 to 600 it does have superior autofocus so it's a bit of a balancing act now 
noting how the 1.4 teleconverter affects the performance of the autofocus on the S5 II, I wouldn't recommend getting a two times teleconverter because that's two stops of light lost. And you're probably gonna to have to switch to manual focus. I think a 1.4 is probably the sweet spot. And I think as much as um, I'd be concerned about extra weight for walking and hiking, because it's a lot to carry. One day I think I would like to own the 150 to 600 because I think it's a, a viable alternative to have for that extra performance that you get. I'll have to hire it to try it out as a comparison, but based on what I've read, it is supposed to be better. And I think, you know, for an all an all in one lens, which gives you that range for your bird photography, your wildlife photography, it's probably worth having. But equally, if you want to travel lighter, you can get an awful lot of amazing shots with the 100 to 400, even with this teleconverter. And I'll bring a couple up now just to show you how sharp it is. Because moving on to the last point, is a lot of people are concerned about sharpness being affected. Now I know that it does make it softer, but one of the things that surprised me was it seems to be pretty much sharp. Um, I've, if there is any degradation, it's negligible. Um, now the Sigma 100 to 400 is already a very sharp lens for, uh, for bird photography, but um, when you put the teleconverter on and I pixel peeped in, and you'll probably have seen from some of the sample photography shots I brought up, it's pretty sharp. Um, and, you know, I've, I've, I've mixed in some shots, I'll tell you which is which, or which were taken without and which were taken with the teleconverter, um, so you can do a comparison. But honestly, I couldn't tell the difference on sharpness. There may have been a subtle difference, but remember, it's forcing it to stop down. So you're using the lens that it's almost at its sweet spot, which is around f8 to f9, um, which is the sharpest this lens is, gets at. I tend to shoot a little bit wider than that when I can, just for the light, because uh, the lens isn't maybe quite as sharp wide open. Uh, and maybe that's what compensates for it, but you won't need to worry about sharpness. But again, at times two teleconverter, Remember, it's going to be pushing it down to, I think, F, is F13? F13 or 14, somewhere around about that range. And you're really struggling. When I was doing bird photography in OK light, I was already hitting ISO 3200. So that's the problem with the times two, really. You're another stop, ISO 6400. In good light, yeah, you might be a little bit better off in that respect. And that's the problem with teleconverters. So it's something you've got to weigh up. I can't wholeheartedly recommend it, um, but it does work quite well. And I have been pleased with it. Not as, as, as happy as I thought because I was a bit disappointed with the autofocus, but the autofocus in video seems to be okay unless you give it a busy background or it loses the subject. And when it loses the subject, it struggles to come back sometimes. Even though without the teleconverter, it can do that. Usually it'll recover more quickly. Um, whereas if I found you know, you'd focus on in the background and it would you'd tell it to come forward and it would like, well, it wouldn't. And you'd have to tap on it again and the touch auto focus to bring it back to something that it could pick up on. So there you go. I hope this was really helpful, folks. Um, if you did enjoy watching the video and got any um, benefit from it, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'll catch you all later. Bye.